Well, I kind of figured we might be talking about Nintendo Switch 2 today, but I thought it would be after Nintendo's Q&A session where maybe he would drop a few little remarks on it. Nothing too substantial, but boy was I wrong because Nintendo's current president and CEO of the entire company, Shintaro Furukawa, went ahead and just dropped a bunch of bombs on the Nintendo Switch 2 situation, actually commenting on rumors, reports, and leaks. And if you remember, Nintendo's policy in the past has been we do not comment on rumors, reports, and leaks. That's just not what Nintendo does. But this is a new president who's clearly showcasing this is a new era of Nintendo. And he did comment, but it's very interesting what he said. And you're going to take things one way. He probably means it a different way. And it's going to be kind of crazy. So we're going to dive right in right now. So the first thing he brings up are when uh, he's giving off all the financial data and he's talking about all the sales and everything, he decided to just start talking about Nintendo Switch 2. And he goes on to say, rumors are circulating on the internet as if they were public information. And this is about a new device, but they are inaccurate. These are exact quotes from him. He's saying the rumors on the internet are inaccurate. Now, not which rumors, not what about them's inaccurate, are the entire things inaccurate, but he did stop there. He then cites reports about Nintendo showing off Switch 2 related stuff at overseas events, which is probably referencing Gamescom, but it's important to note he never actually said Gamescom, and that they said anything about the system to software makers in 2022, which is probably referencing the Activision Blizzard King stuff as untrue. So he's basically saying both of those things are untrue, but actually he never mentions Gamescom and he never mentions Activision Blizzard King. Keep this in mind since he's talking in generalities. There's a reason he's doing this. I pointed out on X, but at least one of those statements from Furukawa we already know isn't the whole truth from Nintendo. It's redacted, but now publicly available email exchanges. We know, and it's on legal record, that Nintendo did talk about NG, aka Next Generation Switch, with Activision Blizzard King. Now, while there isn't a Nintendo exact email attached to this internal email chain, Nintendo did testify at the hearings and did not deny these meetings took place when brought up. It's just really important to note that we have actually legally binding proof that Nintendo did talk to Activision Blizzard King about it. We also know Nintendo talked to Microsoft when signing that 10-year contract for Call of Duty. And this is just a personal belief because we can't guarantee Switch 2 ever came up in that. But I kindly highly doubt that that contract would come up and they wouldn't talk about the future of Nintendo at all since it could obviously pertain to Call of Duty. But again, that's more speculation we can't confirm that any of that was ever talked about. Now, beyond this, Nintendo has done some weird things in the past. Andy Robinson from Video Game Chronicle actually quoted me on X and added that in the past, Nintendo denied there was a DS Lite the day before it was announced. Fans should stop taking corporations' words literally. Furthermore, Nintendo did something very similar with the new Nintendo 3DS a week before unveiling it. Now, this doesn't mean they're about to unveil Switch 2, as we just talked about a couple of situations where they denied something right before unveiling it. It just means that corporations have many reasons for speaking the way they do publicly and or to investors. The widely held claim that they can't lie to investors does hold some truth, but the word choice by Furukawa is intentional. Remember, he called the rumors, without specifying which ones, inaccurate. No explanation of what's inaccurate. He called the overseas, didn't say Gamescom by name, and select software companies, didn't mention Activision Blizzard King, being shown in 2022 as untrue. 
The word choice is always key because he isn't technically calling out those individual cases. He's thrown water onto a flaming inferno, hoping to calm the smoke down just enough for the public to notice all of Nintendo's great Black Friday deals going down so they can hit their 15 million sales target for the year. Dr. Sir Kentoto also quoted me, remember he's an industry analyst that lives in Japan, and added in because a lot of English language media hadn't actually caught wind of this yet, but Furukawa also said that Nintendo is aware of the recently circulating patent that shows a device with multiple screens would become public. He also said this doesn't mean that it will be used in a product. Of course, not denying that it could be used, but that it likely won't be used. Then again, this falls in line with what I've been saying the whole time about patents. However, the exact quote is now out there and has been translated at Fami Boards by the user FWB-BWD, and I did reconfirm this with Google Translate, and states... Again, these are words of Furukawa. We applied for the patent with the understanding that the information would be made public. This does not signify that it will be incorporated in future products as is. Now, important to note the term as is. This is repeated in machine learning. This has been repeated with other people who've looked at this quote. Kind of suggests there might be multiple screens in the future there might not be maybe it's not detachable maybe it's a slider screen suddenly the whole folding screen sliding screen switch to idea doesn't sound so crazy i don't think that's what's happening i think we probably would have heard something by now we've only heard eight inch lcd I, we haven't heard anything else but i'm just pointing out that they haven't completely dismissed the idea of bringing dual screens back and that's kind of cool again don't think it'll be there right now but maybe they launch a future accessory I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. So what's the truth in any of this? Well, it's kind of a big who the hell knows. Nintendo didn't deny all the reports. Remember the dev kit reports back from July? No comment on those. It's interesting as Nintendo's old policy was we won't comment on rumors and reports and leaks. But Furukawa doesn't seem to care. Also, hey, Nintendo's actually paying attention to rumors, leaks, and reports. Pretty neat, as their lack of acknowledgement in the past always left an air of doubt that they even paid enough attention in the first place, enough for it to actually reach, you know, the top of the chain. But honestly, Furukawa is sort of being a sly dog. He's commenting when it's easier not to, but he's not outright denying very specific reports and rumors, only vague mentions and zero explanation. This is actually a textbook deny without specifying exactly what you're denying, giving you plausible deniability once you announce the product. Other companies have done this frequently at investors' meetings to focus on present sales rather than unannounced products. For funsies, I actually looked this up. At one point, Iwata in the past said they weren't working on a DS successor at an investors' meeting. Like, okay, is he just lying? Well, after it got announced mere months later, he was asked about that, and he simply said, my words were misinterpreted as a form of denying that was actually what he meant. It's just sort of proof that Nintendo isn't afraid to skirt the line, even in the past at investors' meetings, uh, without giving enough details to pin their statements to any specific thing. Even if we think we understand what they are talking about, we think he's talking about Gamescom, we think he's referring to Activision Blizzard King, but he's got complete plausible deniability, so no one can come back to him and say, you lied. Technically not, because you don't know what he was talking about, and he'll never tell you. Anyways, they seem to always be doing this, by the way, Really close to the time they're actually going to reveal new hardware, which I find to be fascinating. And again, I don't think it's going to be revealed this year. Could be early 2024, though. So yeah, I wouldn't rule out January through March for a reveal, but it's just very fascinating. This always seems to happen the closer we get to hardware being revealed. That being said, this wouldn't be a, 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 a day of Talking Switch 2 if we didn't get some new, like, sort of rumors or doubling down on stuff. So Nash Weedle popped up, and whether you believe him or not, I don't know. He threw out this tweet, which is sort of doubling down on something he said before. It might be more of a prediction, but he said, Switch 2 is coming out sooner than many predicted. I already gave my opinion on the release period for Switch 2, and now I am firmly reaffirming myself. Before June 2024, the new Nintendo console is launched. And again, it could just be him doubling down on his opinion. It could just be maybe he's learned some information that backs up his opinion. Again, I don't really know if he's an actual insider or an actual leaker. He's gotten some stuff right. People claim he's not, but then we can't really confirm that he got the... Metroid Dread stuff from anywhere else. I don't know. It is what it is. Now, finally, 
These were statements that Furukawa made when revealing the financials for Nintendo today. They weren't part of the Q&A session, so I do suspect we'll have follow-up questions during the Q&A segment later today. We'll talk about Nintendo's financial results and their other pertinent news in a Prime News episode later, so suspect us to go over all of that because it's actually kind of impressive what's happening, but it also there were some statements made that clearly show that it doesn't matter that technically, I'll give you a tease, the Nintendo Switch right now, year-to-date, is ahead of the sales of last year because a majority of sales for Switch happened during the holiday season, and that's when Nintendo was predicting a downfall in sales, and they may be correct on that. Remember, they don't have like a big Pokemon game and a jam-packed holiday, right? It's Mario Wonder, which is a big deal, but yeah, they, they're, they're really relying on bundles. They're not really even discounting the platforms, so I think Nintendo's just preparing that this holiday season is going to be much lighter than last holiday season, and that's that's why they're projecting 15 million or hoping. They're still hoping to get 15 million. They think the prediction's appropriate despite being ahead. That lets you know that, hey, we're actually predicting a pretty big downfall in quarter three sales. That being said, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Again, we'll have much more on the financial report, getting the specific details on Tears of the Kingdom and Pikmin and 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 you know, just a whole bunch of stuff happening at Nintendo that seems to be setting things up. You guys have a good rest of your day. We'll catch you in that video. We'll, we'll jam pack some other news in. And you know what? We'll be back live streaming, talking more about this tonight. And we got the Nintendo Prime podcast tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Time, where we'll be obviously talking about Switch 2 based on Furukawa's comments and diving into how well Switch has been doing this year and what impresses us the most. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.